Being rich and famous is more than red carpets and red sports cars. It means that you also have the money to spend on the hobby you no longer have to be ashamed of. Henry Cavill has taken his Don Draper good looks and square jaw to the heights and depths of geekdom, portraying both the Man of Steel and championing Geralt of Rivia, aka The Witcher on Netflix, with the second season pulling $8 million towards a net worth of $40 million. It wasn't the payday that drew him to Witcher, however. That was him being a huge fantasy nerd. He even posted an Instagram of him building himself a proper gaming PC. In an interview with GQ, Cavill confessed that he let Snyder's call regarding Superman casting go to voicemail because he was playing World of Warcraft and it's not a game you can pause or save. He also collects and paints miniatures for the Games Workshop franchise Warhammer 40k, a miniature and model based tabletop war game that has sunk many a gamer's retirement fund. Like any hobby, it's not the individual pieces that get you, with model kits reaching $130, it's that the collections can only grow. Cavill has a plan for that, however. Just as he's campaigned for the Witcher series, he's also expressed interest in doing a Warhammer 40k series. Mark Hamill is nerd royalty, not just for saving the galaxy and helping bring balance to the Force, but also for giving definitive voice for Batman's biggest foe, the Joker. The long-running Batman the Animated Series featured the Star Wars star voicing what is many people's favorite version of the Clown Prince of Crime. While he didn't go on to become a leading man like his roguish companion Harrison Ford, who played Han Solo, his voiceover work in fan service has allowed him a comfortable $18 million net worth. Talking to Vanity Fair, Hamill stressed that had he not played the fair-haired Jedi Master, he would have been right there with us on Star Wars' opening day. Prior to being cast, he had been a fan of stop-motion effects pioneer Ray Harryhausen and Superman Comics and Warship Peanuts creator Charles Schultz. Nicolas Cage has managed to do the impossible, swinging wildly back and forth between Oscar-winning roles like the lead in Leaving Las Vegas to confoundingly cheesy straight-to-home B-movies and whatever he was doing in Wicker Man. Some of that might be the unbearable weight of massive talent, and some of that is his well-documented castle habit. The star is as famous for dumping $150 million on a pair of castles and a T-Rex skull to decorate them as he is for his movie roles. Nick Cage isn't just in on castles and dino bones, though. He's also big on Superman, not just as being cast in the storied and doomed production of Superman Lives, but as a lifestyle, going as far as naming his son Kal-El, Superman's Kryptonian name. There's a conceit in pop culture that hasn't aged well that suggests that if you like nerdy things, you will not be attractive to whoever it is you're trying to be attractive for. Magic Mike star Joe Manganiello would like to have a word. The jack sex symbol has taken the fame from roles like Big Richie from Male Stripper series and parlayed that into his big interest, Dungeons and Dragons. While moviegoers know him for his abs and being Flash Thompson to Tobey Maguire's Peter Parker, he's known to the geek world for his part in the D&D play podcast Critical Role. With $50 rulebooks and miniatures, the hobby can drain on the bank account, but Manganiello has managed to turn his hobby into a side hustle, starting Death Saves, a geek-themed streetwear maker. Critical Role made headlines when the Kickstarter for the animated adaptation of their adventures pulled in a record-breaking $11.5 million. Fast and Furious stalwart Vin Diesel also has a long history with Dungeons & Dragons, which he credits with turning him to acting. Growing up in an artist collective probably didn't hurt either. Diesel gave a nod to his geek origins and his role as Xander Cage in the movie Triple X by having the name of his favorite D&D character, Melkor, tattooed across his belly. The name Melkor has even geekier roots, coming from J.R.R. Tolkien's Middle Earth history tomb, the Similmerian. It also just so happens to be the basis for his character in the movie The Last Witch Hunter. How committed was Diesel? The class Witch Hunter wasn't in the main rules at the time he was playing. It was taken from a third-party publication called The Arcanum. You might not immediately think that the original gangster Ice-T is also an original geek, but that would mean that you don't listen to his Final Level podcast, where he talks about his love of video games and even Dungeons & Dragons. You might have noticed his gamer streak on his appearance on MTV's Cribs, where he featured his collection of full-size arcade games, including the original Mortal Kombat. He had found a place in LA that would sell him the machines for around $5,000 a piece. 
Ice-T was one of the first rap stars to buy a mansion, and unlike other stars that have come and gone, he parlayed his rap career and acting career into a $60 million net worth. Since then, he has taken his love of video games and his distinctive voice into the game world, including Gears of War 3. He even did an unboxing video of a special edition of the game. Far less surprising in the pursuit of all things nerdy is comedian's comedian Patton Oswalt. Oswalt has made his own nerdiness part of his stand-up for years and has transferred that into a career of nerdiness. He's had plenty of geeky roles including multiple appearances in Marvel productions as Pip the Troll, the various Agent Koenigs, and outside the voice of the mental organism designed only for killing himself, MODOK. He even parodied his own nerdiness delivering a Star Wars filibuster on Parks and Recreation. He discusses his Tuesday ritual of heading to the comic book store and filling out his list of buys, which had $5 a pop can add up. While Oswald wouldn't sneer at something as gauche as net worth, he parlayed his geekiness to a $10 million net worth. Another nerdy celeb who turned the financial drain of the geek hobby into a geeky payday is Scott Evil himself, Seth Green. Green, who also voices Chris on Family Guy, took his love of toys, comics, and games and partnered with Toy Fair writers and friends to create the stop-motion geek-themed sketch show Robot Chicken on Adult Swim. Seth writes for the series and with his friends and co-creators also provides voices. The series and his acting roles has provided him with a net worth of $40 million, enough to keep him in plenty of toys. Not all nerdy things come in blister packs. It's not uncommon for big-name stars to take the big bucks and buy expensive cars, but McDreamy himself, Patrick Dempsey, isn't content to having a polished collection that hardly sees the light of day. Instead, he's found Dempsey Racing, where he co-pilots a Porsche 911 GT3 in endurance racing events like the 24 Hours of Le Mans, 12 Hours of Sebring, and 24 Hours of Daytona. Those races have multiple classes competing at the same time, with the outgoing GTAM class allowing for well-heeled amateurs to team up with professional racing drivers to compete in world-class races. Access doesn't come cheap. A full season of GT racing can cost as much as $5 million. John Travolta became the picture of cool in the disco movie Saturday Night Fever. Then disco became decidedly not cool. Travolta got his cool back, appearing as Vincent Vega in Pulp Fiction, and not even a Battlefield Earth could stop him now. That success has sailed him to a net worth of $250 million, more than enough to indulge the thing he's most nerdy about, flying. For those who see their aircraft as a form of conspicuous consumption, your run-of-the-mill multi-million dollar Gulfstream is enough. But for an enthusiast like Travolta, that's thinking too small. Travolta bought a surplus Boeing 707 from Qantas Airlines for a cool $5 million. Back in 2017, he announced that he'd donate the craft to the Historical Aircraft Restoration Society in Australia. Travolta is only licensed to fly the craft in the United States. While Flash Thompson from the Spider-Man movies was played by a hardcore D&D fan, Maguire has a gaming hobby of his own. One that can either make players money, but only by taking it from other players. Maguire is noted as an intense fan of poker, enough that it earned him a portrayal in the story Molly's Game about a woman who arranged high-stakes poker games for high-profile clients. In fact, poker is considered to be a heavy contributor to the actor and producer's $75 million net worth, with some estimating he makes anywhere from $10 million to $40 million a year just from high-stakes poker games. Nicole Kidman has come a long way since her role in the Australian teen movie, BMX Bandits. She's managed to turn her award-winning roles into a net worth of $250 million. That's plenty of money to cover her nerdy obsession, coins, specifically those from 4th century Judea, which can go for close to $100,000 a piece, though she is not public about the actual value of her collection. If you think he's sexy and you want his body, singer Rod Stewart would like you to let him know. Stewart's raspy and sultry rock singing voice has helped build a $300 million net worth. While visions of rock stars driving expensive cars and partying like unsupervised teenagers, Stewart likes to spend his dough on model trains. The Telegraph reported on his home set, which is roughly the size of a tennis court, but that's only available to him when he's at home. The singer told the Daily Mail that when he's on tour, he'll book an extra room in certain hotels for his trains. Leonardo DiCaprio has gone from teen idol to sex symbol to award-winning actor and star of memes. 
His long and storied acting career has garnered him the net worth of $260 million, plenty of money to indulge his favorite hobby, collecting action figures. DiCaprio's collection includes hundreds of Star Wars, superhero, and 80s cartoon figures like He-Man and even the A-Team. A sale of a part of his collection raised $110,000 for charity. Fellow teen idol turned cultural icon Johnny Depp has a collecting hobby of his own that you might not see coming. The $75 million superstar and former owner of the Viper Club has an enviable collection of Barbie dolls. Depp got into the habit in the most adorable way possible, by playing Barbie with his daughter. He even said that he developed the voices for his roles while doing so until his daughter asked for a normal voice. His collection has expanded beyond Strictly Barbie to include celebrity dolls as well, which he'll update based on what's going on, including for a time putting an ankle monitor on his Lindsay Lohan doll, because why not? Knowing that Ice-T is out there playing video games while on tour might give one pause before talking too much smack to their online opponent. Imagine the voice that talks back being Ice-T's. 